Okay, thank you. So most of this audience is familiar with the concept of the multiverse. And one of the aspects of the multiverse that we want to know is if the multiverse um, has different regions of space-time and those different regions of space-time sample the laws of physics in different ways, we want to know which regions could be alive or which regions could support life or habitability or whatever you mean. So in particular, what I can focus on here is a simpler question, namely, um, what does it take to have working stars? That's just one aspect of what I think we need for habitability. So to answer this question, <clears throat> um, to cut a long story short, I'm going to build stellar structure models. And I'm going to vary to start with only two things, the fine structure constant alpha and the gravitational constant g, and ask the question, in that plane of parameters, alpha and g, what range of parameter space allows for working stars? Um, just focus on the solid line in this um, diagram. Everything below the solid line allows for working stars. Our universe is um, represented by the gold star in the middle. This parameter space varies alpha and g by 10 orders of magnitude in either direction. And the takeaway point from this is that there's a whole lot of real estate in parameter space with working stars, which is different than what a lot of the literature actually says. Now, this might not be enough. What you also want is not just stars. You might say, well, I want stars to be hot. So you have to fall to the left of this blue line. I want stars to be long-lived. I have to fall below the red line. So still, if I make those um, cuts, I still have a lot of parameter space. Now, you might even want more things. You might want stars to be able to form. You want gas to cool. You want planets to um, be allowed to be non-degenerate, yet massive enough to hold on to atmospheres, and yet smaller than their stars. And when you put all of these parameters together, you are left with the hatched region in this diagram. Now, you can still vary the fundamental constants here, alpha and g, by orders of magnitude in several different directions, given by this polygon, and still allow for working stars with all of those eight properties that I just described. It turns out that as long as you have your stars hot enough and long enough lived, all the other ones you get for free. Next up, you might say, well, that's all well and good. We also might want carbon. Now, carbon's a problem. There's a famous problem called the triple alpha problem, which goes like this. In our universe, beryllium-8 is unstable. The natural way to make carbon would be to take um, protons and make them into helium, make helium into beryllium, beryllium into carbon, carbon into oxygen, oxygen into neon. In fact, if you look at those so-called alpha elements in our universe, the most common elements are helium, carbon, oxygen, neon. But beryllium is missing. And the reason beryllium is missing is because it's unstable. So the way stars have to operate in our universe is even though beryllium is unstable, at the end of stars' lives, they're hot enough that they make a trace amount of beryllium. That trace beryllium population interacts with helium to make carbon. In order to get enough carbon to populate our universe, Sir Fred Hoyle famously said, we need an enhanced reaction, a resonance. It's now called the Hoyle resonance because it's actually been measured since then. So this special resonance allows our stars in our universe to make lots of carbon, even though beryllium is unstable. So here's the solution to this problem. If you change the um, location of the triple alpha um, resonance, you can change it by 100 keV, and you still get plenty of carbon. But if you change it a lot, where a lot means more than 300 keV, you get less carbon than in our universe. If you change it even more, you get even less carbon. But here's the deal. If you're going to change nuclear physics so much that you change the resonance by 100 keV, you'll also change the structure of beryllium-8. And beryllium-8 only fails to be stable by 92 keV. 92 is less than 300. So it's easier to make stable beryllium-8 than to mess up carbon production through the triple alpha. So if you look for stars in other universes where beryllium-8 is stable, this is the HR diagram. It looks kind of normal. This is the evolutionary diagram where a star is evolved all the way to, um, in this case, half of its core is made of carbon. The point being that it's really, really easy to make carbon-12 with stable beryllium-8. And it's easier to get stable beryllium-8 than it is to mess up the triple alpha process. So there's a whole lot of real estate where working stars can operate. 